The story begins showing a boy named Yun Yul playing together with his deaf mute older brother. Their parents are mute and deaf, so Yun Yul is the only one who can hear and speak. Yun Yul grows into a good boy thanks to his parents' great upbringing. He becomes the only person who can connect his family with the outside world. It's not easy to live in silence, but Yun Yul's family always tries and never gives up to live the hardships of life. One day after seeing an incident that almost harmed his deaf mute brother, Yun Yul asked his father if all the family members were in danger who he would save first. In sign language, the father answered that he would save Yun Yul because he could talk and ask for help from other people to help the family. This heartbreaking answer made Yun Yul feel that his existence was very important, so he considered himself as the second breadwinner in the family. Yun Yul is always careful in his actions because he doesn't want to drive his parents into trouble. Even when he was bullied by his friends, he looks for other ways to deal with it himself. Amidst all of his efforts to live independently, Yun Yul finds his true color through music, after accidentally meeting an old man who owns Viva Music Store. And Yun Yul called him Grandpa Viva. That old kind-hearted man helps Yun Yul to learn guitar for free, until Yun Yul can master it. One day, Grandpa Viva challenged Yun Yul to make a guitar riff from a mysterious, unfinished piece of music. If the results were satisfactory, Grandpa Viva promised to hand over one of his legendary guitars to Yun Yul. Of course, Yun Yul enthusiastically accepted the challenge. However, he didn't have time to show the results to Grandpa Viva, who eventually died of heart disease. Yun Yul felt so lost, he cried in front of Viva Music Store when Grandpa Viva's daughter and granddaughter came. Yun Yul's busy life with music almost jeopardized the safety of his older brother, who was trapped in a fire. Even though there were no fatalities, Yun Yul felt guilty and he lost his enthusiasm for playing music. Years later, Yun Yul is in the second year of high school. He continued his life as an ordinary teenage boy while trying to realize the hope of his parents. Yun Yul is very smart and has a lot of achievements at school, while his older brother is very good at Taekwondo and will join the national team. Yun Yul and his family can now live a better life because of the fried chicken business they started, so everyone lives happily. Yun Yul's father is very grateful to have been blessed with two great sons. Because of that, people no longer look down on him. As a dutiful son, Yun Yul tries to fulfill his father's wish for him to succeed as a doctor. But on the other hand, Yun Yul could not abandon his interest in music. He rents a public locker to store his guitar. He also often performs on the streets to entertain many people as an anonymous person, who hides his identity. It didn't take long for Yun Yul to become popular. He accepted an offer from one of the indie bands known as Spy Nine. Appearing on stage wearing a mask became a special attraction among fans of this group band. When Spy Nine was starting to be known by many people and had the opportunity to make their name bigger, Yun Yul had a dilemma when he was faced with a situation that required him to choose between his family and his band. He didn't want his busy life in music to endanger his family like before, so he chose to stop playing music. Amidst his anxiety, Yun Yul went to the address of Viva Music Store, which has now been built into a big house. He came there to reminisce about the past while he was learning guitar with Grandpa Viva. At that time, he met a woman named Si Jiang who turned out to be the daughter of Grandpa Viva. She went to America in the second grade of high school and returned to Korea with her daughter after hearing about the death of her father. Si Jiang never thought that Yun Yul was the little boy she had seen when she came to her father's music store. It turned out to be before Grandpa Viva died, he had written a will to hand over one of his guitars to Yun Yul. And now Si Jiang tried to fulfill his last wish by looking after the guitar as best as possible until she could finally hand it over to Yun Yul in this unexpected meeting. Yun Yul cried after hearing Grandpa Viva's will, who finally acknowledged Yun Yul's prowess in playing the guitar. The testament indirectly gave the answer to Yun Yul that he could still make his parents proud through music. Then Yun Yul followed his heart to join the Spy Nine again, but another problem arose when one of the band members fell ill. Yun Yul tried to help his friend by buying medicine, but this was misinterpreted by someone who didn't like Yun Yul's family. In her mind, Yun Yul hung out with punks and took illegal drugs, so she reported this to Yun Yul's parents. Yun Yul's father, who knew this news, was very disappointed and he immediately met his son after a gig in a cafe. He demanded an explanation and asked why Yun Yul didn't tell him earlier about Yun Yul's feelings towards music. Yun Yul explained that he was afraid of being confronted if he told his father all this. Then Yun Yul's father insists that even though Yun Yul will be opposed, he must persuade his father first as proof that he respects his father. Yun Yul was annoyed and said that he couldn't persuade his father about music because his father couldn't hear. But then, Yun Yul regretted hurting his father's feelings with his words. When Yun Yul went to calm his mind, an anomaly occurred that led him to a mysterious music store called La Vida Music. The place reminds him of the Viva Music Store he once visited as a kid. There, a frustrated Yun Yul exchanges his guitar for some money with a very eccentric shopkeeper. Yun Yul got a return coupon if he doesn't end up selling his guitar. When Yun Yul came out of that music store, he saw an unusual view of Seoul. And finally, he realized that he had time travel to the past. Things got even more confusing when Yun Yul accidentally met a younger version of his father, who apparently could hear and speak. Yun Yul's father, known as Yi Chan, apparently was not born deaf. 
He is a passionate teenager who dreams of spending his youth in pleasure. The only problem he is facing now is love, especially after his heart was set on a very beautiful and popular teenager, Si Jong. Yi Chan immediately fell in love with her at first sight, when she visited the ice cream shop where Yi Chan worked part-time. Nu said that Si Jong was very talented at playing cello. She was the belle of Siwon Arts High School and came from a prestigious family. It was said that getting her heart was more competitive than entering university, because she was never interested in teenage boys who were obsessed with her. All this information was not enough to make Yi Chan realize that Se Dayong's love was too difficult to achieve, because he never doubted his feelings. One day, Yi Chan, accompanied by his best friend Maju, went to a party where Se Jiang was performing her talent for playing cello. Yi Chan didn't give up even though he knew that Se Jiang already has a boyfriend, a medical student and member of a quite popular band. Yi Chan insisted that he would marry that beautiful girl no matter what happened. This made his best friend frustrated because it all seemed impossible for Yi Chan. Then Yi Chan finally had the opportunity to meet Se Jiang, but it was only to hear the fact that they live in different worlds. Yi Chan comes from a modest family and doesn't have anything. He lives with his grandmother who runs it in for students. Si Gaiyang's words made Yi Chan realize that he had to have something to win her heart. One of the senior students in the inn gave Yi Chan a casual suggestion. He suggested to Yi Chan that he should join the group band because girls like boys who are band members, and maybe it will make Se Jiang fall in love with him. One day, after buying a Kurt Cobain t-shirt, which was legendary at that time, Yi Chan wore that t-shirt then came to meet Se Jiang at her school. Coincidentally, Se Jiang also wore the same t-shirt, and it made them look like a couple. Out loud, Yi Chan invited Si Jiang to watch his first concert. The school is going to hold a festival in one month and Yi Chan will perform there to win Si Gaiyong's heart. Then, Si Jiang accepts the invitation. If Yi Chan looks stunning at the festival, he has a chance to win Si Gaiyong's heart. But otherwise, Yi Chan has to give up and forget Si Jiang. After that, Yi Chan met the members of his school band which was about to disband due to a lack of members. They agree to accept Yi Chan if he can bring a great guitarist into the team. For that, Yi Chan looks for Dong Jin, a great guitarist who is quite famous. After successfully persuading him to join the band, they agreed to meet. But the plan failed when Dong Jin suddenly left the meeting because he had to go to the toilet. That's when Im Jul appeared and picked up the newspaper that Dong Jin accidentally dropped because Im Jul bumped Dong Jin. Yi Chen came to pick up Dong Jin, who said that he will bring a newspaper. So Yi Chen thinks that Yun Jul is the person he is looking for. After getting to know each other, Yun Jul is very surprised to meet the younger version of his father and he is forced to admit to being Dong Jin, so he can find out more about Yi Chan. However, the band members refuse to accept Yun Jul because they know that Yun Jul is not Dong Jin. Yi Chan disappointed because he had been lied to, but Yun Jul was more disappointed because his father joined the group band to attract a girl and she's not Yun Jul's mother in the future. Meanwhile, Yun Jul's mother Chum Na was studying at Siwon Arts High School and she was very good at painting. A few days ago, Chun A accidentally spilled water paint marks on Se Jiang after her leg was tripped by a student who didn't like her. Se Jiang wasn't angry even though her clothes were dirty. And as a form of apology, Chun Na lent her Kurt Cobain t-shirt to Se Jiang so she can change her clothes. That's why Se Jiang accidentally wore the same clothes as Yi Chan. Through this incident, Se Jiang and Chun A ended up becoming good friends. On the other side, after being kicked out by Yi Chan who felt cheated, Yun Jul looked for a way home and he was very frustrated because he didn't know how to go back to the future. Even worse, the money he got after selling his guitar couldn't be used at that time. When Yun Jul was sleeping under the bridge with the homeless people, in his dream he received a call from the master, the owner of La Vida Music Store. He said that Yun Jul had to find the reason why he was in the past if he wanted to go back to the future. Meanwhile, Chung Na, with all her limitations, was always treated badly by people who didn't like her. One day, Chung got into trouble with a bully who then dragged her and locked her up in a warehouse. At the same time, Yi Chan, who wanted to meet Se Jiang disguised as Si Wan Art's high school student, so that he could meet her at that school. When his plan failed and the teacher chased him, Yi Chan hid in the warehouse and met Chung A who was trapped there. Yi Chan didn't realize that the girl was deaf and mute, but Yi Chan kept trying to talk to her. Until finally the teacher came to the warehouse, so Yi Chan ran away with Chung A. Yi Chan realizes that something has happened to Chung A, and he wants to help her. Even though she couldn't hear, Chung A could understand that Yi Chan wanted to help her when he gave his phone number. Meanwhile, Yun Yul, who followed Yi Chan to Siwon Arts High School, accidentally met young Se Jiang. However, there was a serious and short conversation between them when Yun Yul mentioned Grandpa Viva's name, which made Se Jiang uncomfortable and left him. Grandpa Viva was Si Gaiyong's biological father. But since she was a kid, Se Jiang grew up with her adoptive parents for some reason. Se Jiang didn't like the fact that she was abandoned by her biological parents. She also didn't like her adoptive parents who always demanded her to be the best cello player. However, she had no choice and could only fulfill their hopes to survive. Yun Jul remembers his father's story about the inn run by his grandmother. Yun Jul goes to his great-grandmother's inn and pretends to be a tutor who will teach Yi Chan after learning that Yi Chan's achievement at school was very bad. 
Because Yi Shan's grandmother really wanted her grandson to study well, she accepted Eun Jewel and prepared lodging and free food to pay for his services. That's how Eun Jewel was able to survive for a while, and he had more chances to recognize his father. Everyone at the inn welcomed Eun Jewel very well. The grandma prepared lots of food and Yi Chang sang happily. Eun Jewel remembering memories when he was a child before his great grandmother died. He never thought that his father could laugh out loud in his youth. All of this led Eun Jewel to question what made his father deaf and why his father never told him about this. One day at work, someone left a letter containing a concert ticket for Yi Chan. The letter was written by Se Jiang, who invited him to go to the concert together. Yi Chan was excited to go to the meeting location, but he was late. The concert held by Se Gion's boyfriend and his band members had already ended. Se Jiang, who felt that she had not invited Yi Chan, was very angry because Yi Chan looks like a stalker who keeps following her. Se Jiang scolds Yi Chan and makes him feel humiliated in front of many people. When Se Jiang looks down on Yi Chan and his ambition to make a great band, Bun Yul suddenly appears then introduces himself loudly as the future guitarist in Yi Chan's band. He also accepts Se Gion's boyfriend's offer to play music together. Yi Chan confidently sang on stage, while Yi Chan showed off his amazing guitar playing. That night, Yun Yul didn't believe he could play music with his father. It is something that was impossible in his previous life and he was very happy. After this incident, Yi Chan told Eun Yul about his real motive in creating a band. It wasn't just to attract Si Gaiyong's heart, but for the sake of his youth which would end soon. After graduating from high school, Yi Chan wouldn't go to college and look for a job to make money. He wanted to rebuild his grandmother's restaurant which went bankrupt because of his irresponsible father. It means that he won't have time to relax in the future, and this is the last chance to let his youth shine. After saving Yi Chan who was almost hit by a car, Yun Yul suspects that his father cannot hear due to an accident and Yun Yul thinks that he can prevent it and change the future. However, Yun Yul doesn't know when that will happen. So to prevent it, he has to be by his father's side all the time. Because of that, he agrees to help Yi Chan in creating a band. One time, Yun Yul heard a story from his great-grandmother about Yi Chan not being interested in studying. Yi Chan thought that his grandmother was working hard making money so he had to work part-time to help his grandmother. However, Yi Chan's grandmother hopes that her grandson will study well and be able to go to college for his future. Hearing this, Eun Yul is determined to change his father's view so that he wants to go to college and he continues to persuade him to study. After seeing Eun Yul's ability in playing guitar, the three members of the school band agreed to accept Eun Yul in their group. However, they didn't want to accept Yi Chan as a vocalist before he proved his worth. Eun Yul used this opportunity to teach his father to play the guitar and develop his vocals until finally he was able to prove himself to the other members and they acknowledged Yi Chan's skills. The band consisted of five members and Maju was their manager. The band was called the First Love Memories Manipulator. However, everything went wrong when Se Jiang and her family moved to the United States. Eun Yul and Maju, who knew this news, decided to keep it a secret from Yi Chan so that he wouldn't feel let down. Eun Yul knew that Se Jiang left Korea in 11th grade and didn't return until his father's funeral. But Yun Jewel was very surprised when he saw Se Jong in Korea a few days later. It seems like she ran away from her adoptive parents. She also cut her long hair and sold her beautiful dress to get money. Se Gaiyong's presence became a problem for Yun Jewel because she would get in the way of his parents' love journey. Dun Jewel then asked Se Jong not to meet Yi Chan. Not only that, Yun Jewel said that Se Gaiyong's words in the concert really hurt Yi Chan. Se Gaiyong's personality seems to be changing. Now she wanted to apologize to Yi Chan for all her actions the other day. Dun Yu will then remember the story that his parents met in sign language class. That meant, if he could prevent Yi Chan from becoming deaf, then his parents would never meet. Apart from that, Yun Yu is also having difficulty finding her mother's whereabouts at the moment. Because in the future, Cheng Ai is very secretive about her past. Even so, he still wants to help Yi Chan and find a way to bring his parents together and prevent Se Jiang from ruining their love story. Meanwhile, Yi Chan finally hears the news about Se Gaion's departure, and it makes him very sad. At work, Yi Chan's boss told him that the girl who entrusted him with a concert ticket for Yi Chan just left the shop, and it turns out she is Chung Ah. Yi Chan is angry with her, and feels fooled by the concert ticket and the fake letter she gave him. Yi Chan thinks that Chung Ah deliberately wrote the fake letter to prank him because he really likes Se Jiang and everyone at the school knows that. When Chung Ah left because she couldn't hear Yi Chan's complaints, Yi Chan thought she didn't care about him and even shouted saying she was deaf. Even though Chung Ah couldn't hear that, she understood Yi Chan's gestures and she left upset. She cried alone behind the telephone booth when it started to rain. Yi Chan felt very guilty when found out from his boss that Chung Ah was deaf. After that, Yi Chan went to look for Chung Ah again. At the same time, Eun Yul accidentally saw Chung Ah crying alone and felt sorry for her. Eun Yul handed his umbrella to her and didn't realize that she was his mother in the future. Chung Ah came from a rich family. However, she wasn't happy since her stepmother came into her life. That evil woman had two children who were very annoying and worthless. Chung Ah's father was very busy working, so he never knew how his daughter was treated badly by her stepmother. Chung Ah was like living in a prison. She was not allowed to learn sign language, so she had difficulty expressing her feelings. Chung 
I was always alone and felt lonely. Until finally she saw Yi Chan and was entertained by all his silliness. When Yi Chan barges into the party to see Si Gaon's appearance, as the host who held the party, Chum, Ah could only see him from a distance. She was very entertained when she saw Yi Chan run away from her house and almost ruin the party, making her stepmother angry. Then she met Yi Chan again at the bookstore. At that time Yi Chan swiftly protected her from the pile of fallen books and that made her heart beat very fast. After the incident, Chung Na went to meet Yi Chan at his part-time job. She continued to follow Yi Chan and bought the same clothes as him when she went to the market. Chung Na didn't regret lending her clothes to Sei Jiang which makes her look like Yi Chan's girlfriend. However, she always wondered whether Yi Chan would meet her if she was the one wearing the t-shirt. That day when Chung Na was locked up in the warehouse and feeling frustrated, Yi Chan again appeared in front of her and helped her. Chumna felt happy and realized that she was in love with Yi Chan. But she finally found out that Yi Chan liked Sei Jiang when Chumna got the news that Sei Jiang would move to the United States, she thought Yi Chan would be sad, and Chumna felt sorry for him. Then, when Sei Jiang invited Chumna to go to the concert together, Chung uh, actually handed over the invitation to Yi Chan so that he would have one last chance to meet Sei Jiang, the girl of his dreams. Chumna did that because she wanted to thank Yi Chan. But it seems that Yi Chan didn't understand and misunderstood Chung Ah's good intentions. After what happened, Yi Chan finally met Sei Jiang who asked him to talk, but he asked Sei Jiang to wait because he had to look for Chung Ah and apologize to her. However, Yi Chan's efforts were unsuccessful. Afterwards, he talks to Sei Jiang who apologizes to him. While Yi Chan was flowery because of Sei Gaiyang's change in attitude, Yan Yul felt worried and continued to question the reason the girl had returned to Korea. But Sei Jiang never wanted to explain it and that made Yan Yul very upset. Things got even more chaotic when Sei Jiang started being nice to Yi Chan. Then Yu was afraid that his father would fall in love with Sei Jiang more and more, so he kept bothering Yi Chan when he approached the girl. Sei Jiang, who realized this, thought that Yun Yu liked her and was jealous seeing her close to Yi Chan. Then Yu didn't immediately deny that statement, and this became proof that he had a little feeling for her. Because after all, Sei Jiang is too cute to ignore. Another problem arose when Yi Chan changed the title of the song for the festival, just because Sei Jiang asked him to do so. He was too blinded by his love for Sejong Yeon Yul, who didn't like Yi Chan's attitude, chose to leave the band and left the inn. That night, Yeon Yul talked to the master in Dreamland, who explained that things in the future had started to change since Yeon Yul came to 1995. It means that his time travel could change the future, but he still didn't realize the reason why this happened to him. Yeon Yul is not the only person who travels through time. It seems that Sejong, who is rumored to have returned to Korea, is in fact another person who came from the future. She is Yun Yu, Sei Gaon's only daughter from 2023. In the story, Sei Jiang is used to obeying her adoptive mother's wishes to become the best cello player, and she enjoyed that career in the end. After moving to America, Sei Jiang married a doctor and gave birth to Yun Yu. However, Sei Jiang regretted it because she had to stop playing cello and made her career fade. Sei Jiang inherited her hopes for Yun Yu, not realizing that it made her daughter feel imprisoned. Playing the cello doesn't make Yun Yu happy and she feels fed up with being used as a tool to make up for her mother's failures in the past, who has now become a drunkard. After divorcing her husband, Sei Jong and her daughter returned to Korea. With all the regrets, Sei Jong kept talking about her first love who was in a group band. Yun Yu finally thought that her presence was unwanted. She became very angry with her mother and went to America to live with her father. But when she got there, Yun Yu found out that her father had remarried which made her feel even more abandoned and wanted to die. Yun Yu cried alone after ignoring her father's calls who was worried. At that time, Yun Yu thought that she should never have been born. After that, an anomaly occurs that leads her to the La Vida music store. Just as Yun Yu, Yun Yu exchanges her cello for some money before she is finally thrown into the past after leaving the store. Yun Yu finds herself in South Korea. Because she has nowhere else to go, she stays at his mother's empty childhood house. When Yun Yu mistakenly called her Sei Jong on the street while selling clothes, it crossed her mind to impersonate her mother and try to change her life. If she can bring Sei Jiang together with her first love, she hopes that her mother will live happily and she will never be born as Sei Gaon's daughter. That way, Yun Yu can make her depressed desire to die in a poetic way. It all makes sense why Sei Jiang looks like someone else. Because basically, she's a different person. Meanwhile, some clues led Yun Yu to the electric guitar release event, launched by Jinsung Instruments, Chung Ah's father's company. The event was shared directly by Chung Ah's stepbrother. Who likes to act as he pleases. Yun Yu accidentally gets involved in the guitar audition that is part of the event, but due to technical problems, he becomes a victim of electric shock and has to be rushed to the hospital. At the same time, Yi Chan went to meet Chung Na at her school to apologize for the incident the other day. However, Kang Ah had a fever, so she couldn't respond much before she finally fainted and Yi Chan took her to the hospital. Luckily, Chung Na's condition got better soon and Yi Chan continued to accompany her for the rest of the day. Yi Chan sincerely apologized to Chung Na, took her to eat and walked her home safely. 
Even though it was so short, Changna felt very happy and her heart kept beating fast. Eun Yu's mission to find her mother's first love began. She investigated every teenage boy who was close to Sejong and matched them with the characteristics her mother had told her about in the future. Eun Yu seemed to realize Eun Yu's good looks when talked to him one on one the other day. She thought that he was very dangerous because he had made her heart pound. Meanwhile, Eun Yu's departure made Yi Chan feel lost. He had spent a lot of time with Eun Yu and started to consider him a friend. The inner bond between them was so strong and even though Yi Chan didn't realize that Eun Yu was his son, he felt sad and worried about Eun Yu's condition who disappeared for days. As a form of solidarity, Yi Chan rejected suggestions from his friends to find a new guitarist, and he tried to find Eun Yu instead by spreading his photo in various places. In this process, Yi Chan met fraudsters who claimed to have found Eun Yu and contacted him just to blackmail him. At that time, Chung accidentally found Yi Chan battered under the bridge and she asked Eun Yu for help who happened to be looking for Yi Chan and passing through the surrounding streets. Meanwhile, Eun Yu woke up at the house of the Jinsun company owner. Chung Na's stepbrother locked him up at the house to avoid bad news and everyone who was dealing with him was really scary. Outside of the house, Eun Yu meets Chung Na and realizes that she is his mother after seeing her name written on the school uniform. So Eun Yu finds out more about his mother's secret and is shocked when he sees her being treated badly by her evil siblings and stepmother. Eun Yu tries to help Chung Na and felt very sad when he found out that his mother didn't even know sign language to communicate. Eun Yu was very angry and asked the evil woman why Chung Na was being treated like this. And finally, the leader of Jinsun Company, Chung Na's father, arrived at the house. He immediately asked for an explanation. He felt guilty towards Eun Yu for the accident caused by his son. He gave Eun Yu a chance to negotiate. Later, Yun Yul asked why Chung Na's father didn't teach his daughter sign language. Apparently, he did that on purpose because he didn't want the public to know that his daughter was born with a disability. Then, even Yul refused the compensation money offered by the chairman of the Jinsung company, and instead, he wanted to teach Chung Na sign language. Their Chan did not suffer serious injuries, and apparently, his friends did not remain silent responding to the news of Yun Yul's disappearance. Even in the search for Yun Yul, one of them was willing to fight with gangsters. Yun Yu, who was still disguised as Se Jiang, visited Yi Chan in the hospital, and she told him what happened that night and how Chung Na played an important role in saving him. Yun Yu didn't know that her mother was friends with Chung Na, and she was very surprised when she heard the story that Chung Na was deaf girl. On the other hand, the chairman of Jinsen Company was touched by Yun Yu's sincerity and said that he could return Chung Na's sweet smile if he taught her sign language. After getting permission on his first day of teaching, Yun Yu cried remembering his childhood when he learned sign language from Chung Na. And now, he is the one who taught his mother how to communicate using sign language. After knowing that Yun Yu had no other place to go, Chung Na's father wants to accommodate him temporarily and send him to Siwon Arts High School. That's how Yun Yu was able to watch over his mother closely and look after her with love. After dreaming that Se Jiang becomes his mother in the future, Yun Yu becomes increasingly afraid that his father will not marry Chung Na. This fear makes him increasingly dislike Yun Yu as the person who plays Se Jiang. After accidentally meeting Yun Yu, Yun Yu reports his whereabouts to Yi Chan and gives information that he attends Siwon Arts High School. Yun Yu's mission to look for her mother's first love has not yielded results. Previously, she was very sure that Yi Chan was the person after doing some research, but she had not investigated Yun Yu and could not confirm which of them was her mother's first love. Yun Yu wore her mother's school uniform and barged into Siwon Arts High School so she was able to approach Yun Yu. When she met Yun Yu, she asked why he hated her so much and always forbade her from approaching Yi Chan. Of course, Yun Yu couldn't answer it, and finally Yi Chan came to Siwon Arts High School with his friends and made a commotion in order to invite Yun Yu to join his band again. Yun Yu was willing to do that, but on one condition that Yi Chan is not allowed to meet Sejong again because Yun Yu also likes her. Yi Chan, who doesn't accept it, hits Yun Yu, and finally they fight. Meanwhile, Chung watches them with worry. The commotion ends when the school teacher appears and everyone runs away. While hiding in the midst of chaos, Yun Yu asks for an explanation from Yun Yu regarding his confession of love that feels not sincere. Of course, it was because Eun Yul didn't really love her, but Eun Yul lied and kept saying that he really liked her. The teacher caught them both and took them to Chung Na's stepmother as the principal at Siwon Arts High School. Eun Yul, with all her cleverness, managed to convince Chung Na's stepmother not to report to her grandmother, Aka Se Gyeong's mother who was in America and accepted her to go back to school. Eun Yul does not accept Eun Yul's confession of love and she asks for time until the spring festival to make a decision. Based on the clues, Eun Yul's first love was supposed to perform a song to capture her heart on the day of the festival. And that's when Eun Yu will know whether Eun Yu is the one or not. Eun Yu and Yi Chan agree to compete fairly on stage. The one who looks the most stunning has the chance to win Si Gyeong's heart. Yi Chan dares to accept this challenge because he has learned a lot to play guitar and sing. On the other hand, Eun Yu is confused why did Chung A look annoyed with him until he finally found out that Chung A already liked Yi Chan. 
and she was angry with Eun Yul for hitting Yi Chan during a fight on the field. Now, Yun Hul's mission to make Chung Ha's love was reciprocated by Yi Chan. And to do that, he invited Chung Ha to hang out with his friends from the group band so Chung Ha could get to know Yi Chan better. Besides, it turned out that Yun Yu could understand basic sign language because she had learned it from her friend who was deaf in the future. That way, Yun Yu could communicate with Chung Ha, which made her feel very happy. On one occasion, Yun Yu got a call from the master, who said that he had sent someone to help Yun Yu. But before that, Yun Yu had to help the person first. This message was still a puzzle for Yun Yuul, but at least he had a glimmer of hope. On one occasion, Yun Yuul took Eun Yu for a ride in the countryside, until the motorbike they were riding ran out of gas. On a cold and lonely night, Yun Yuul gave Eun Yu his jacket and asked her whether she could choose him over Yi Chan. It turned out that all this time, Yun Yuul had been interested in her and all efforts to approach her were sincere. At first, Yun Yuul thought that Sejong Akai Yun Yu was from 1995, and he hesitated to love her because of the age difference. However, that view changed when Eun Jul realized the fact that they were now the same age and there was no reason for him to hold back those feelings. At the most unexpected moment, Yun Jul kissed Eun Yu and made their heart beat fast. Yi Chan secretly learned sign language to express his gratitude to Chung Ha for saving him the other day. When Yi Chan saw Chung Ha's drawing book, he accidentally saw a painting of his own face. Chung Ha was embarrassed and immediately snatched it, but it was too late. Yi Chan asked if that meant Chung Ha liked him. Then, Chung Ha bravely admitted it, making Yi Chan shocked and fell from his seat. Chung Ha knew that Yi Chan couldn't accept her feelings. And because of that, Chung Ha had prepared an illustrated comic, asking if they could at least be friends. Yi Chan was moved when he realized the sincerity of Chung Ha's love for him. And that makes his feelings for Sejong start to change. Chung Ha is very happy when she gets a fax machine as a gift from her father. Yi Chan was the first to send her a message. The leader of the Jinsung company, who saw Chung Ha's happy smile, began to realize that his daughter was the gift he had ever received and regretted his actions so far. Meanwhile, An Yu was still struggling with her depression. In the future, one of her friends who was also a cello player and was depressed by her parents' demands, chose to give up and end her own life. An Yu replaced her position as the best cello player, but it weighed heavily on her mind and traumatized her to the point where she couldn't play cello anymore. However, Sig Jiang as a mother didn't understand her feelings. At that time, Yun Yu stopped by to meet Yun Yu when she felt very sad and they ended up at the cinema. Yun Yu cried, thinking about ending her own life. Yun Yu tried to make her feel comfortable and gave her motivation by saying that Yun Yu doesn't need to try too hard to look impressive. She just needs to continue with her life and is already very great. The first love memories manipulator band needs a new name and visuals. Therefore, they recruited Yun Yu and Chumna to take photos and make posters for their band. When Chung Ah accidentally met Yi Chan in a bookstore, she suggested using a painting of Frida Kahlo, a watermelon with writing Viva La Vida, which means long life of their band's visual. Yi Chan liked it, and they laughed while discussing it, creating a bond between the two of them. All the band members liked Chang Ma's idea and Watermelon Sugar emerged as their new band name. While everyone was practicing seriously, Chang Ma and Yim Yu tried their best to make attractive band posters and photos. Even though she looked indifferent, Yim Yu actually already liked Eun Yul and she secretly kept paying attention to him. She even started to feel jealous when Eun Yul became the center of attention of the girls at school. At school, Eun Yul has to face Chung Na's stepmother who starts warning him, but he is not afraid. Chung Na's stepmother really wants to control the Jinsung subsidiary company, which might fall into Chung Na's hands when she grows up. Therefore, she continued to isolate Chung Na, but her efforts failed when Eun Yul came. Another problem arose when one of the members of Watermelon Sugar, Hyun Yul, was involved with gangster affairs and it turned out that he had been part of the gang. The gang leader was in prison and he had a grudge against him Yule for some reason. And this got worse because reportedly he will be released temporarily. After remembering pieces of clues from the future, Yun Yule finds out that one day before the school festival starts, when the band members are preparing the stage, an accident will occur which will make one of them seriously injured. Yun Yule suspects that this is a tragedy that will harm his father and made his father deaf. When that day came, Yun Yule tracked Yi Chan and took him to a faraway place. And sure enough, the stage lights prepared for the festival reportedly fell and almost injured the people who were there. Yi Chan survived the danger and Yun Yul used the rest of his time to accompany Eun Yu to the cinema. However, he received a call from his friends that the practice session on stage was still being held. Eun Yul realized that his mission was not finished yet because the date on that day had not changed, which indicated that Yi Chan was still tied to his destiny. At the same time, Yi Chan and his friends had to face the terrible night when the gangster leader, who was targeting Hyun Yul, arrived and attacked them. Eun Yul left Eun Yu alone and he arrived at school when Yi Chan almost got a fatal attack. Even though the gangsters finally ran away, Yi Chan did not suffer serious injuries because of Eun Yul's help. Eun Yul felt very relieved when the date changed. On the other hand, Hyun Yul finally opened up about his past and he apologized to his friends because they had to experience this incident. 
Hyun Yul just wanted to forget his dark past life by playing music, but the gang leader considered it a betrayal and thought that Hyun Yul had reported him to the police which put him in prison. This misunderstanding was unavoidable and fortunately, the gang leader had already been to prison. The day of the festival arrived. The watermelon sugar arrived with all the preparations and was ready with t-shirts and stickers from each member. Yun Yu was angry with Yun Yul for leaving her alone at the cinema and she continues to avoid him. However, Yun Yul was forced to do that because he had to save Yi Chan. But he couldn't explain it. Yun Yu didn't like being left behind because it was part of her trauma. This incident reminded her of her mother's behavior and how her father left her to remarry. All of these things made her feel like she'd been abandoned. Yun Yul understands Yun Yu's feelings and he regrets his actions. But his mission to save Yi Chan cannot be ignored. Now Yun Yu thinks that Yun Yu only wanted her as a symbol of victory, and not because he loves her. She has made the decision to choose Yi Chan on this fateful day, and that means Yun Yu's mission to match his parents will be even more difficult. But Watermelon Sugar performed with extraordinary success, and this was a very impressive performance. Everyone, except Yi Chan and Yun Yu, was shocked when Yun Yu walked out in the middle of the performance. Yun Yu just found out that her father, who was a doctor, was once in a band. She just learned this news from Chung Ah's stepsister. Who is friends with Sejong? It turns out that the first love that Sejong always talked about was the man who ultimately became Yun Yu's father. Sejong was already dating the man through an arranged marriage but didn't immediately love him. The festival event that Sejong refers to happened at a different time and that wasn't Yi Chan's show. That day, Yun Yu's father did sing a song to attract Sejong's heart, which finally melted as she loved him back. Maybe Yun Yu doesn't like her mother's character, but that doesn't mean she doesn't love her. The fact that she wants to find Sejong's first love is proof that she cares and wants to make her mother live happily. But all that effort finally disappeared and her desire not to be born just disappeared. Even so, all her feelings of sadness were still bothering her. Especially her trauma which couldn't just disappear just like that. This situation made her anxious, she was very angry, annoyed, sad, and confused about what to do. Meanwhile, instead of thinking about Yun Yu, Yi Chan keeps wondering why Chang Na didn't come to the festival. When Yun Yu was angry with Yun Yu, she told Chang Na that she would choose Yi Chan and this made Chang Na feel like she had no chance to fight for her love. That's why she didn't come to the show. Yi Chan was anxious and went straight to Chang Na's house to ask why she didn't come to the show. Chang Na tells Yi Chan that she is deaf and asks if Yi Chan invited her just to mock her. Yi Chan can't understand everything, so he takes out his sign language dictionary from his pocket and tells Chang ah, that music is not only for the ears but also for the mind, eye, and the heart. While holding back her tears, Chang Na wrote something for Yi Chan before leaving him. The letter explained that Chang Na would never see Yi Chan again because they lived in different worlds. After what happened, Yun Jul went to meet Yun Yu at her house. Yun Yu was desperate and accused Yun Yu of only coming because Yun Yu left the show and not choosing between him and Yi Chan. Yun Yu is offended because he didn't think about that at all and was only worried about Yun Yu. Yun Yu thinks that Yun Yu is from 1995, so she asks Yun Yu not to worry about her and feels like they live in different timelines, so they will never meet again. Yun Yu wants to go home and she goes to the airport, but she doesn't know how to get back to the future. Yun Yu, who knows this, immediately picks her up when it starts to rain and says that he will help her find a way out even though he doesn't know what really happened. Yun Yu just doesn't want to let Yun Yu get lost in sadness, and he wanted to offer his shoulder to lean on. After taking Yun Yu home, Yun Yu will accompany her for a while. They cooked food together, joking with each other and talking heart to heart. Yun Yu also started to open up about her trauma while playing cello. Yun Yu went home feeling happy because Yun Yu had accepted his existence again. But all that didn't last long when the master gave the news that the time for his return was near. After what happened, Yun Yu represented Sejong and met Yi Chan, who apparently had long realized that his love was one-sided. Long before the festival day, Yi Chan always paid attention to her and after seeing her gaze at Yun Yu, he realized that the girl liked Yun Yu. Yun Yu felt guilty but Yi Chan didn't regret his feelings. He even thanked her for making his youth full of enthusiasm and impressive stories. Yi Chan didn't realize it but his heart slowly turned to Chona. There was a series of precious moments when Yi Chan accidentally saw Chung Ah and his heart melted when he saw her feeding stray cats. Then Yi Chan followed her to a painting class and was captivated when she saw her tying her hair. After that, Chung Ah received bad treatment from a boy who tried to approach her. The teenager was not happy when Chung Ah ignored him and started making fun of her with his other friends. Yi Chan, who found out about this incident, beat them black and blue and they all ended up at the police station. Luckily, Yi Chan's grandmother immediately came to defend her grandson. Chung I is very grateful, but she still avoids Yi Chan. That night, Chang was surprised when she got a fax from Yim Yul, asking her to immediately meet Yi Chan at the band practice room. Chang uh, comes in worried, but it turns out it was just Yi Chan's plan to see her. Yi Chan prepares a notebook which he turns over one by one, asking how Chang uh, could make his heart flutter, but then leave him. Yi Chan revealed that he wanted to sing for her on the day of the festival. But since Chang wasn't there, he had to do it now. 
Yi Shan had a special song for Chumna about facing adversity, and he translated every lyric with sign language. Chumna's tears flowed, and when Yi Chan forgot his last verse, Chumna approached him, then hugged him tightly, and started to cry even louder. Everyone went on holiday to a villa. On the train, Yun Yi was shocked by the master's call, who contacted her by phone. The master explained that he had sent another time traveler to help her and reminded that the time of her return was near. At the same time, M. Yule was also getting a mysterious signal on his phone. They both passed each other and realized each other's identity as time traveler. M. Yule and M. Yu get off at one of the stations to avoid Yi Chan, who began to suspect them. They then introduce each other's real identities, explain each other's situation and understand the reason they were thrown into the past. Yun Yule believed that his mission was to save Yi Chan and match his parents, after going through many things, Eun Yu was not sure of her purpose and the reason she was thrown into the past, but she believes that they both have interrelated reasons. Li Chan took the time to look for a cat for Chang Nao, worried that she would feel bored alone. Chang Nao was very happy and after naming the cat, she prepared a nickname for Yi Chan in sign language. Chang Nao's nickname is Clear Voice and she thinks Yi Chan has a shiny voice. She can't hear his voice but she can see and feel it. Yi Chan is very touched and he keeps staring at Chang Nao. A moment before Chang Nao left, he grabs her hand and kisses her. Everyone is enjoying their time together and someone joins in the happiness. He is the old man who owns the music store who once lent his facilities to the Watermelon Sugar's members, so they could practice before the festival. He happened to be there because the villa occupied by Yi Chan and his friends is managed by his friend. All the band members knew him as the once legendary guitarist. Un Yul was completely unaware that the man was Grandpa Viva, even though he had often met him and shared stories about his problems during this period. Of course Grandpa Viva thought that Yun Yu was Si Jiang, his biological daughter. But he was confused when he saw the girl's reaction, which clearly didn't recognize him. The love she received from Yi Chan, and the attention from Yun Yul and the other band members gave Chung uh, the strength to rise from her slump at home. After a fun trip, Chung Na was greeted with her stepmother's anger for skipping class and using sign language, which made her sick. Chung, I wasn't afraid because now she had friends. She tried to send a message to Yi Chan, but the message was intercepted and her fax machine was broken. She was locked up again in the attic, where she often spent her time alone and felt imprisoned. Yun Yul, who had just arrived at home, immediately realized this mess and he threatened the housemaid to tell Chung Ah's whereabout. His heart hurt when he realized that his mother often gets this kind of treatment. At that time, Chung Ah's father was not home. Yun Yul ignored all threats from Chung Ah's stepmother and took Chung Ah to Yi Chan's house. While Yi Chan's grandmother comforted Chung Ah who was sobbing, Yi Chan felt angry and annoyed at Chung Ah's father who seemed to be ignoring his daughter. He knew exactly how it felt to be abandoned by his own father. The pain was real and he couldn't bear to imagine how lonely Chung Na had been all this time. Yun Yul believes Chung Na's father will do the right thing after learning the truth. During a trip to the villa, Yun Yu felt that Grandpa Viva was constantly watching her began to get suspicious and asked the members of Watermelon Sugar. He then explained that Grandpa Viva was the member of a group band whose career was destroyed because of a scandal. He fell in love with a novice actress and had a child with her out of wedlock. After investigating more deeply through the news and magazines, the young actress who was related to Grandpa Viva turned out to be dead, not long after giving birth to her baby. Then you finally realized that the baby was Si Jian, who was then adopted by her adoptive parents. Em Yu didn't tell Em Yul about her anxiety, especially after she heard the story about what happened to Chung Na. Em Yu thought that Yun Yul had enough trouble facing his own problems. One day it was revealed that in 2023, Yun Yu knew Yun Gul's brother, Yun Ho. In the story, Yun Ho once met Yun Yu in a hospital. They became friends and Yun Yu learned sign language from him. One day, Yun Yu read a sad story written by Yun Ho. And it turned out that it was a true story about an accident that befell his father. Yun Ho accidentally found out about the story when his father met Maju after being apart for a long time. Yun Ho saw how Yi Chan avoided Maju, so he took the initiative to find out the relationship between the man and his father. That's when Yun Ho learned the story of Yi Chan's accident, which made him so down that he had to leave the music and stay away from his friends because he was embarrassed. Yun Ho wasn't ready to tell Yun Yul for some reason. Yun Yu was surprised because based on Yun Ho's story, the accident that happened to Yi Chan hadn't happened yet. That means Yun Yul hadn't prevented anything. Yi Chan was said to have been hit by a drunk driver on a road. And with this information, Yun Yu wanted to help Yun Yul to save Yi Chan one more time. Meanwhile, Chum Na's stepmother, with all her cunning thoughts, wanted to get rid of Yun Yul, but her efforts failed. Chum Na's father also finally found out what happened to his daughter while he was not at home. He was very angry when he saw the walls of the attic full of Chunga paintings and realized that his daughter often locked up there. He expelled Chunga's stepmother and fired all the housemaids for keeping secrets. It turned out that Yun Yul had secretly sent a message to the Jinsun Company's leader about what happened to Chunga and the alleged corruption that his wife had planned. With all the evidence of the crimes, Chunga's stepmother is just waiting for the time to break down and rot in prison. That night, Yi Chan takes Chunga home and invites Chunga's father to talk in private. Yi Chan hands over the sign language dictionary he has been using, 
to Chunghao's father and says if he wants to communicate more with his daughter, then he just needs to try. Meanwhile, on the day the accident should have happened, Yun Yul and Yun Yu managed to save Yi Chan from being hit by a drunk driver. They were very excited and planned to meet. But on the way, Yun Yu accidentally saw Se Jiang coming out of Grandpa Viva's music shop. Yun Yu remembered a story from her mother in the future, who said that she once came to her father's music shop but didn't have the courage to talk to him. Yun Yu told Yun Yu all of her problems, including the fact about her biological grandfather, which made Yun Yu shocked when he realized that the music shop owner was Grandpa Viva. That's when Eun Yu finally found out that the boy she had seen while mourning her grandfather's death was Eun Yul. On that night, Lun Yul immediately met Grandpa Viva, whom he missed so much. But on the way, a car was driving towards him at high speed. Yi Chan, who happened to be there, sacrificed himself to save Eun Yul. Before the accident, Yi Chan made a song in his room which made Eun Yul very surprised. It seemed that it was a mysterious piece of music that Grandpa Viva had once shown to Eun Yul, who at that time asked him to make a riff of a song from the music as a challenge. Grandpa Viva never told him, but Yun Yul finally found out that the artist who created the music was his own father, and he helped Yi Chan complete the music earlier. In the original line, Yi Chan made the music alone and the accident happened when he was about to send the music cassette to Grandpa Viva to be assessed. However, Grandpa Viva refused because he had other matters and Yi Chan had an accident on the way home. Even so, the cassette still fell into Grandpa Viva's hands and that's how the sadness begins. Now in a different storyline that has changed, Yi Chan dropped his music cassette during an accident and Grandpa Viva picked it up proving that this circle of sadness still occurred. After meeting Grandpa Viva at the scene, Yun Yu, who disguised as Si Jiang, asked why Grandpa Viva left her after her mother died and let her be adopted. Grandpa Viva cried, saying he never wanted to leave her and only found out about her existence when she was adopted. He thought that Si Jiang was living happily with her rich family. Yun Yu said that all this time she was depressed living with her adoptive parents. She hoped that her grandfather would understand that even though Si Jiang looked happy, she was actually very devastated. Finally, Eun Yu said to her grandfather that if he met someone who was similar to her one day, he needed to say that he never intended to leave her. Through this message, Eun Yu hopes that her mother's life can be better and that she doesn't feel abandoned. Eun Yu was filled with immense guilt. He almost chooses not to return to 2023 and disappears from the timeline. It turns out that the driver who hit Yi Chan was Chung Ah's older stepbrother who was annoyed with Eun Yu because he had destroyed his mother's plans to control Chung Ah's father's property. He was arrested, but that didn't stop the fact that Yi Chan lost his hearing after a very serious head injury. When Yi Chan woke up after surgery and realized that he couldn't hear, all the people closest to him were sad. Yi Chan's tears were unbearable when his grandma came to the hospital. Yun Yul, who couldn't bear to see the sadness, left the room. Another part of his guilt was that he truly believed that Yi Chan's life had become a mess because of him and felt that things had not changed. Yun Yu emphasized that Yun Yul's efforts were not in vain. Yun Yul has saved her from adversity and Chung Ah can finally get love from her father. Then Yun Yu revealed the reason Eun Ho never told Eun Yul about Yi Chan's accident. It was because the whole family had put too much of a burden on him and Yun Ho didn't want Eun Yul to be getting more and more stressed. Eun Yu said that it was not a burden that Eun Yul had to carry. So far, Eun Yul has always considered himself the second breadwinner in the family. But now, he realizes his limits and not everything is in his control. Eun Yu convinces Eun Yul to return to 2023 according to the master's direction, who says that a double moon will appear the following night. And that will be a sign of their return home. At home, Yun Yu meets her mother who turns out to have secretly run away from America. Si Jiang is shocked to think that she is hallucinating. Eun Yu gives her some sincere advice to live her life according to her wishes. The news of the accident reached the ears of the Jinsung Company's leader, who then felt responsible and was determined to provide justice for him. He even promised to cover Yi Chan's hospital and school costs until he graduated from college, but he was forced to keep this a secret from Chung, who will continue her studies in America. With the dictionary given by Yi Chan, Chung Ah's father learned a little sign language and finally he could see his daughter smiling at him. On the other hand, Yun Jul met Grandpa Viva who finally handed Yi Chan's cassette to him and asked him to listen to the song. Before saying goodbye, Yun Jul sincerely thanked Grandpa Viva and gave some advice regarding his health. In his music recording, Yi Chan conveyed a message to Yun Jul that he was very grateful to have met him, who was always by his side, helped him face problems and made his youth shine brightly. It was not easy to leave Yi Chan who was at the lowest point in his life, but Yun Jul has no choice. Yun Yul and Yun Yu passed through separate portals in the same way when they entered the La Vida music store. They returned coupons for their musical instruments and returned home in 2023. Turns out the master of the Ward of Time is Grandpa Viva. Everything made sense why Yun Yul and Yun Yu were thrown into the past. They were both bound in a circle of sadness that Grandpa Viva accidentally created when he left his biological daughter, Se Jiang, and refused to accept Yi Chan's recording until finally he had an accident. The time travel was a gift from the universe for Grandpa Viva, so that he could pay for his mistakes and give those who are bound the opportunity to learn to understand life. 
An Yul can get to know his parents more deeply and Yun Yu can learn to appreciate her life and understand her parents' feelings. Back in 2023, An Yul wakes up in the magnificent house of the Jin Sun family. His father and mother are reunited and their relationship with their past friends is still well maintained. Now, Chun Na is the daughter of a conglomerate because she maintains a good relationship with her father and she was given the responsibility as principal of Siwon Arts High School. Yishan holding a subsidiary company from Jin Sun Group. Instead of feeling embarrassed about his life story as he used to, he appeared on stage to launch their newest product with full confidence. Dan Yule is still part of the Spy 9 band, but this time with the blessing of his parents. This band is already well-known and liked by girls and is about to go on tour under the direction of Maju as the manager. Dan Yule and his band perform at the Jin Sun guitar release event. And the most touching part is that Yi Chan finally realizes that Yun Yule he has known in the past is his own son. The story ends when Anyu comes to see Unvul's show and finally they meet off stage to greet each other, longing and sharing memorable moments. Life doesn't have to be perfect to shine. You don't have to wait till you're old to try and not have to try too much. Happiness can come from small things. Everyone has a different story and sadness, and we should not compare our lives with anyone. If you can't fulfill your parents' hopes, then prove that your choice is right and you will never regret it.